football in the NFL to this point in the season as they built up their undefeated record. Let's see if they can survive another difficult challenge in this one. It's the Ravens going up against the Vikings. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, it's one of the new jewels of the NFL, no doubt, as you get a look inside U.S. Bank Stadium here in Minneapolis. It can certainly get loud inside this building. And just a few moments ago when the Vikings were introduced, it was downright shaking in here. They're set for football as the Vikings get ready to do battle with the Baltimore Ravens. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, you look at this Vikings ball club. We're in October now, so everything, everybody should be coming into form, shouldn't they? They really should, and what you have now is a full routine established about what you want to get done and full focus on the season. Meanwhile, for the visiting Ravens, they come in playing pretty good football, winners of four of their last six games. Getting toward the halfway point of the NFL season, week seven is underway on EA Sports. This fielded at the two. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. They're led out by a man raised in Alabama, went to Florida State. It's their quarterback, Jameis Winston. I know teams always talk about having a 24-hour rule after a game, and eventually we end up rolling our eyes. But it works both ways, right? 24 hours if you win, 24 if you lose. But, boy, it's a fun 24 when you win the game. And you win NFC all the of the week, isn't it? Absolutely. And now running right through it. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. Play clock winding down. Play fake. Winston. He's going to rifle one deep left side. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. Carter, your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground, and then when you want to throw it, look out. Here they come after the quarterback. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. From the gun, Winston. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that one incomplete. Had some position, but couldn't hold on, and it brings up fourth down. And it is true. You can draft the fastest. You can draft the most athletic guys. But if they don't know the art of positioning, sometimes it's all for naught. In this case, in the right spot, help force the incompletion. Yeah, but had his hands on it for a second. Would have been a tough catch, though. Falls incomplete. Ryan Quigley on now to kick this one away. Back deep, Michael Campanero. Fair catch signal for and taken at about the 15-yard line. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And that will come the offense as they take over. So now the Ravens getting ready for their first go on offense. They'll be led out by the veteran quarterback out of Michigan State. The former Spartan, it's Kirk Cousins. Well, he did go 2-2 two and two in the last ball game. Well, actually, he went 2-2-1, two, two and one, with the 1 being the victory. Yeah. That's the bottom line there. But wasn't it funny at practice? He threw one when we were watching for an interception, and the defense got on him a little bit. Good-naturedly, but they're letting him know, you got to cut down those interceptions. We can't bail you out all the time. Yeah, two touchdowns, two picks. But as you said, they got the win in that effort last week. 
The numbers for him from a week ago. 21 carries, 119 yards. Well, he's the number two runner in the league, and you just know the offensive line wants to get him to number one because most of the good ball carriers, they take care of their linemen. Could be a gold watch in their future if he becomes a leading rusher. On second down, they'll try and run the counter. Nowhere to go that time. Might have gotten a yard up to the 25. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. Third and short yardage, Cousins. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short, they elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short, but you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. Marcus Sherrill's back deep for Minnesota. They only punted twice in the win last week as he gets this one away. Broken tackle. Oh, it breaks another. A good kick, 49 yards. Just three on the return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out with a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first one. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. Haloni Nata. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. Now, that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. Now a second down throw for Winston. In trouble here. Down he goes, back at the eight-yard line. Haloni Nata in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. Okay, let's go back a little bit and see if my schooling comes to the front. What's that old saying? Those who forget the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them. That's the same guy who's gotten back-to-back -back sacks. I think a double team may be in order. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. From the shotgun, it's Winston. Now this is where field awareness comes into play. He's getting perilously close to his own goal line, and after that sack, backed up to his own two. Here's Ryan Quigley now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. So a short drop, but he's able to get it out, and this is a good kick. Look at the dance and the juke. 51 yards on the punt there. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And the Ravens taking the field. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession, see if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Now they're ready to go. They've kind of got a look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. Let's see if they open things up. Let's see what the defense does here, too, after a good stop. Pushing forward for three up to the 48. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. 
They'll run it now out of the gun. He'll get three up to midfield. Quickly now, a look at the defensive starters for Minnesota. Coming out of UCLA, Anthony Barr caused many arguments in the NFL. Not about his talent. That was first round all day. But how would he be used? Defensive end, outside linebacker. With Minnesota, they use him in both spots. And he's been a pro bowler in two of his first three seasons. Cousins now from the 50. Throw right side to Perriman, and it's caught. And they're able to get this one down to the 25. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. And now here's a carry heading left. A spin. And able to work his way down to the 16. A nice run there, nine yards. And it'll be second down. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you take runs like that each and every time, won't you? And again, Look. this time to the tailback. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Only a gain of a yard, but that's all they needed as that's going to move the chains. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy, let him pick up the first down. He will push his way down to about the 14. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. A one-yard gain could look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. Now Cousins. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Well, that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And the Ravens strike first at three zip. So the scoring drive encompasses nine plays, but the net gain, three points. And you're going to have drives like that in this league. Sometimes you just got to take the three and move on. Always better than nothing. And a look now at the game so far for Jameis Winston. And I guess the question, Charles, is what's the formula for keeping him better protected? Because as we see, the protection, it's struggle. And normally what you get is renewed determination. When, <laughs> when the big guy gets hit, that usually sparks people. Hey, we can't let this happen anymore. They take it personally. He's not supposed to be on the ground. But that hasn't been the case so far in this game. So maybe you've got to figure out how do you get rid of the ball faster to help out the offensive line so he doesn't get hit as much. And we'll see if they can keep him off the ground now going forward. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. Almost unstoppable on the ground there as that one is good for 39. All right, I've got to be careful here, all right? He's on the plus side of 30. There may be a little gray in the beard, but that's not slowing down his feet as far as he's concerned. What are you saying? I'm on the plus side of 30. Well, if you're on the plus side of 30, you don't know what I'm on the plus side of. <laughs> all I know is that run right there, let us know there's still some life in those legs. Absolutely, still got a lot of life left in those legs. They run again on first down, Peterson. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. 
Well, if you look where that play starts, O-line versus D-line, that was a battle won by the D-line. Yeah, and oftentimes it's won by quickness off the ball. Who can handle the guy across from them best? On that play, the defensive line did exactly that. They'll run it now out of the gun. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. It's a loss of two, now third down. They tried to run the counter, just that the defense wasn't fooled. And when they're not fooled, you see the end result. Because what you're doing there, you mentioned the counter. You're using your offensive linemen sometimes to pull or move, to influence the defensive front, to go in that direction and create the space back in the other side and block it appropriately. But you're exactly right. Didn't move him, sat there waiting for him and made the play. And the play clock's running down. And did he have enough? He did. He kept it on line and managed to tuck it into the bottom right corner. And that will tie us at 3-3. So this offensive unit, they've now had three drives, and they only have three points to show for it. Payoff is the key for everything. How many offenses have we talked to that say we have to finish drives? Thus far, this team hasn't finished it quite the way they wanted to. Getting set to go again as we look at the back heading onto the field again. A tough challenge here in this one. We'll see if he can duplicate the numbers on your screen that he put up last week, up over 100 and a touchdown. We were watching tape to prepare for this game. One thing you noted that I totally agree with, great complimentary piece in the last game. You know, they're able to throw it pretty well. He ran it exceptionally, and they hope to continue that same formula in this game. Complimentary with an E, not an I. That's my English teacher right there. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. Nothing flashy there. The slant to the slot. Oh, and the frustration for the defensive guys because it's a quick play. And you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch. And he's able to absorb the contact to complete it. And he is out of bounds on the other side of midfield. These are his numbers from last week's contest. Eight catches, 65 yards. And most teams mark down big plays as ones that gain 10 yards or more. He certainly has big playability, and we just saw it on display. The handoff as they run the counter play. And gets by him, and now a little daylight. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. A great effort there with touchdown number 12 on the year. And the Ravens are in for six. In as many coaches' meetings as we sit in, we hear the word finish all the time, don't we? And on that play, the back actually finished getting into the end zone, breaking the last tackle. Tried to wrap up, tried to use the proper technique, just wasn't able to get it done. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And it is up. And it's good. That'll make our score 10 to 3 now. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And shedding through the tackle. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26 yard line. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. No gain on the play there. Second down. Defense doing their job, really nowhere to run the football. Yeah, it's almost textbook, wasn't it? Every place he tried to find an open spot, there just wasn't one. Congrats to the defense, no gain. Call fitting your gaps, right? I love it. You're exactly right. Time running out here on the play clock. And he'll give it here to his running back. Even with that broken tackle, can't go very far. Stop short of the 30. Only a gain of a couple there. That leaves him needing about seven here on third down. The Vikings on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 7. Working out of the gun. Winston. And he is going to go down. They sack him on the final play of the first quarter. One quarter down. 10-3 the score. We're back to Minneapolis in just a moment.
Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter begins with the Vikings holding the football. They are, however, facing a fourth down situation. Here's Ryan Quigley now, standing just outside his own goal line. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. A big kick, 50 yards that time with a return of four. And possession will switch hands first and ten. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36 yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. Now a handoff here to his running back. Give him three yards and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. The Ravens on third down. Just one for three thus far. This will be third and six. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. 12 yards the pick up there. Good for a Raven first. Just shy of the 30. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. And that's something that's been lacking in Baltimore's running game the last few seasons, the ability to really hit on a big run. Last year, their longest run was just 41 yards all season, four yards per carry near the bottom of the league. is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Ten yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. On the run, it's Robert Turbin. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. Not an ideal spot to be on first down, but I love that the play caller did not immediately abandon the running game and say, okay, we've got to throw it in order to pick it up. Stayed with the run, was rewarded with a big-time pickup. Now they're in second and manageable.
They'll try to throw now. Cousins. And his throw here is incomplete. The new acquisition, Martellus Bennett, the intended target. And now it's third down. Brandon, some of those windows that throw the football that exist when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. Cousins now. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Daniil Hunter in there to get him. And that's sack number six for him on the year. He was superb a week ago. Three sacks in that affair. Now one here in the second quarter. Well, how about our conversations this week? With him, it's pretty simple. He said, ah, I've got a few combinations I can try it out they haven't seen yet. And on the flip side, they thought they had a plan to block him. Might need to come up with something else because he looks like he's getting loose now. Punch, counter, punch. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And they will stretch their lead to 10 now at 13-3. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive only yields three points. Yeah, they were able to move the football, but the defense stiffened once their backs were to the end zone, and they were able to hold them to just three. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. This fielded at the two. <laughs> And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense. Get a couple of first downs and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Just a yard on the first down carry. So it's second and nine. Jameis on second down. And he's got the hook up here. It's Kyle Rudolph. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Now a play fake here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Second down, Winston. And Rudolph has it left side. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Well, that was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. The Vikings on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This is third and 16. Now Winston. He's going to float this one deep right side. And incomplete. He can't hang on. Would have been a nice catch. Instead, it brings up a fourth down. All right, I need you to check my eyes here. This entire unit defensively, I think, has looked really strong in the first half, especially in the secondary. They've been cohesive, fast to the football. We just saw another example arriving there to help knock that one away. Here's Ryan Quigley now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And no 
one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Now we'll see what Michael Thomas and the rest of the offense has in store here. They've got the lead. They haven't really had to utilize him all that much so far, but I guess if you're winning on the scoreboard, not too much to complain about. Not at all, but you know those guys out wide, they want as many catches as they can possibly get. They may need him later on if things get a little tighter. Yeah, so far, two catches. We'll see what happens here as the game progresses. And he'll give it here to his running back. Gets it up around the 22 and no further. Did show some power on the run, but not a whole lot of room. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. running back and a short gain there as he'll get it up only to about the 24 give him three yards and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six the Ravens on third down two for five to this point this will be third and six here's Cousins the Vikings after him and they get there for the sack Sharif Floyd to drop it for a loss of 12, and it'll be fourth down. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop, and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop, and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, you know, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz, and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. Big boot that time, 57 yards, the official distance. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. But that kind of run on first down, that's a winning type of a run. That just sets things up for them moving forward as they begin the drive. Off the play fake, Winston. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. Touchdown, Vikings! Stephon Diggs with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Vikings get the quick strike touchdown. Meanwhile, on the NFL scoreboard, a game going on in Chicago. You saw the score at the bottom of your screen a moment ago. We got a good one going on there. Jay Cutler with one touchdown pass thus far. Kai Forbath on for the extra point. And he puts it through. They're within three. It's 13 to 10. Four bath out to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Cousins now gearing up to lead this offense back out there. He hasn't had his best day. They have been good running the football, and they have the lead, though, so maybe he just personally wants to improve his play. And that's without a doubt, because at the end of the game, he wants to feel like he had a really good hand in his team winning, if in fact they do go on and get that done. But the bottom line is finding a way to win the game. So if you're not playing that well, but somebody else is on the team, keep going to that hot hand. Yeah, not over yet, but looking good here in the second quarter. A big hitter there. A first down gain of 26 yards. Well, partner, I have to say they caught him in the right defense there. Nickel set. 
fifth defensive back on the field, and they love to run against that because now you typically get a bigger blocker on a smaller defender. Yeah, because those DBs like you, they want the interception. They're not as worried about the running play, right? <laughs> not at all. And I, I, used to, I, I still remember being in school, and one of my offensive line teammates used to say, boy, I'd love to come downfield and hit you little people. <laughs> Good run there. Second down, Cousins. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Game clock at 2.01. Time for one final play before the two-minute warning. On third down, Cousins. And he comes back with one complete. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Larry Ridley is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. Cousins now to throw on first down. And that's off the mark, incomplete. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. They'll throw again. Cousins firing quickly here. And that's complete. <laughs> a big hit. Knocked down sideways. The Ravens get a new set of downs. Give them 17 on that pickup. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. From the red zone now, Cousins. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Emerson Griffin in there to get him, and that's sack number eight for him on the year. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Cousins now on second down. And over the middle to the tight end, Bennett. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. for Cousins. Over the middle complete. That's Bennett. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath and now they're back out and ready. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And that extends their advantage to six. It's 16 to 10. So that one is his third of the game. Now, if you're wondering, that's only halfway to his career high as he once had six oh, field goals. Oh, Brandon, but what, six? Let's hope we don't get that again, <laughs> please. Okay, can, can we see a few touchdowns here and there? That'd be nice. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. <laughs> And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. 
And a look now at the game so far for Jameis Winston. What can they do now, Charles, to make sure this highlight montage doesn't continue to show more pressure and pressure and pressure? You feel like it always comes back to leverage, don't you? Who is going to win that battle, the offensive and defensive lines? Low man wins, we talk about that, but we think about it in a running game. Well, guess what? The same thing happens when you're trying to pass protect. Are you low? Are you balanced? Are you in a position where the pass rush won't bowl you over on their way back to the quarterback? They've got to reestablish that in order to try and keep their man upright. As they have been bowled over a lot so far in this one. That burst good for 20 and a first down. Well, plenty of credit has to go to the guy carrying the ball. He broke the tackle and gained the yardage. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the defender's bad. They're not going to make 100% of the tackles all the time. Even the best in the game will miss one occasionally. The key is not to let it snowball and miss tackle after tackle. On that play, credit to the offense, but that doesn't make the defense bad. Fresh set of downs here. To throw is Winston. <laughs> Wide open receiver complete. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. On first and 10, Winston. And some room to maneuver. And he works it to the 30-yard line here right at the 30. Seven yards on the play, and it'll bring up a second down. Let's go, D. To throw, Winston. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. But one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. So on third down, the field goal unit will come out as he'll try to get three before half. He made his first. This from 47 yards out. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. Meanwhile, down in Chicago. And it's the Panthers there out to the early advantage. Cam Newton, a single touchdown pass to this point in that one. So a field goal here. They're still down, but they put a dent into that lead before the break. And that's got to feel good because now they've seen that they can put some more points on the board, and that gives them a whole second half to get back to where they want to be, and that's in the lead. This will be fielded at the eight. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Ravens out in front as we send you down to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando where we find our man Larry Ridley with our halftime report. All right, Brandon, back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, let's get you caught up on all the highlights from the first half. The Vikings haven't played their best football and trail because of it.